everyone. I hope you are all doing good and keeping good health. I am glad to present the chapter 7 of our past of class 7 in CERT. That is tribes, nomads and settled communities. Political and Social Scenario This is the beautiful map of India. Here we find different types of kingdoms in North India and South India. The political scenario of India is dotted here with several kingdoms such as Marul in Uttarakhand, Tibetan tribes and kingdoms in China, Gajanavid Sultanate in Pakistan and Afghanistan, Tomaras in the northern part of India around Delhi, Chahamanas in Rajasthan, Sindh in Pakistan, Gujar, Gurjara Pratiharas in Gujarat, Paramaras in Madhya Pradesh, Chandelas in Bundelkhand area, Kalachuri in Chhattisgarh and parts of Orissa, Chalukyas in northern part of Deccan, Kakatiyas in Telangana, East Gangas in Orissa, Cholas in Tamil Nadu, Hoyasalas in Karnataka, Pandyas in Tamil Nadu again and Lambakanas in Sri Lanka. These are all the political scenario of India during the medieval times. You saw in chapter 2, 3 and 4 how kingdoms rose and fell. Now arts, crafts and production activities flourished in towns and villages of India. Over the centuries important political, social and economic developments had taken place in our country that we shall study in this particular chapter. But social changes was not the same everywhere because different kinds of societies evolved differently. No two individuals are alike. So social changes may not be same if you just see in all these kingdoms. It may differ from one kingdom to another kingdom according to their language, their customs, their traditions and food habits, so on. Division of society. In larger parts of the subcontinent, subcontinent is nothing but the countries of India, Pakistan, Bhutan, Nepal, Bangladesh, together called as subcontinent. In larger parts of the subcontinent, society was already divided according to the rules of Varna. According to the rules of the Varna, or Varna means caste. And uh, subcontinent means, as I told you already, that uh, society was already divided according to the rules of the Varna, which are framed in the Dharma Sutras and Dharma Shastras by the Brahmanas. These are the caste system of India, and we have four important castes that is, Brahmans, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras. Brahmans, as per Dharma Shastras, and as per the theory of Dharma Shastras, were created from the minds of the Brahma and Kshatriyas from the shoulder of the Brahma and Vaishyas from the thigh of the Brahma, Shudra from the bottom of the Brahma. This is the four important divisions. Dalit, of course, they are also there, but they are untouchables. That is the least category of the caste system. These rules as prescribed by the Brahmanas were accepted by rulers of large kingdoms. Whatever kingdoms were shown in the last slide, all those uh, rulers, they were accepted. The All these uh, caste varna based theory proposed by the Brahmana. The difference between the high and low and between the rich and poor increased during this period. Under the Delhi Sultans and the Mughals, this hierarchy of the caste system also to be seen and grew further so rigid. This is what we have to notice and that was happened in the medieval times. Beyond the big cities, 
tribal societies and uh, though we have so many important cities and towns uh, there are tribal societies also existed simultaneously in our country besides the varna system we have studied in the last slide there were many societies in the subcontinent who did not follow the social rules rituals prescribed by the brahmanas such kind of societies are called tribal societies and for example santhal tribes lived in jharkhand orissa and west bengal this is a santhal tribal dance this is a folk picture nor were they divided into numerous unequal classes and they are not divided into numerous unequal classes but the society they have their own folk culture they have their own custom they have their own traditions and they have their own language all this is so on such societies are often called tribes and the such society we often call as tribes these are the tribal people bhils and these are the gonds tribal people and here we have the munda tribal community these are all some of the important tribal communities we have characteristic features of tribal people members of each tribe were united by kinship bonds kinship means relationship bonds are there and they are tied with their relations all we are living together they are all sharing and caring each other many tribes obtained their livelihood from agriculture agriculture was their main occupation tribal occupation and a few of them are hunter gatherers or herders and agriculture is their main occupation some of them are also the hunter gatherers and the herders here you can see the hunting scene and how they are carrying the animals from one place to another after killing the animals most often they combine these activities to make full use of the natural resources of the area in which they lived some tribes were nomadic because they are not having permanent home they always move from one place to another and move from one place to another such people are called nomadic tribal people a tribal group controlled land and pastures jointly and divided these among households accordingly to its own rules because they have their own rules they train own customs own traditions accordingly they will decide many larger tribes thrived in different parts of the subcontinent subcontinent as i told you that is india pakistan nepal bhutan bangladesh they usually lived forests hill deserts and places difficult to reach they preserved their culture who were tribal people we will have to see tribals preserved rich customs and oral traditions tribal people were found in almost every part of our country even subcontinent in india pakistan afghanistan bangladesh bhutan and nepal in almost all these countries we do find the tribal people exist some powerful tribal control large territories in our country also in punjab the khokar tribe was very influential during the 13th and 14th centuries later the gakkars became more important in the northwest part of india that is in pakistan their chief the gakkar chief kamal khan gakkar was made a noble that is mansabda by emperor akbar seeing his strength and seeing his powerful caliber in multan and sindh both are in pakistan the langhas and arghans dominated extensive regions before they were subdued by the moguls and these two tribal communities enjoyed very great status in pakistan before they were subdued by the moguls the baluchis were another large and powerful tribes in the northwest part of india along with the gakkar and then khokar and then langhas they were divided into many smaller clans under different chiefs in the western himalayas lived in the shepherd tribe of gaddis in the western himalayas we call them as gaddis they practice transhumance they go with their cattle into the hills and higher strata of the himalayas and for fodder of the 
animals. The distant northeastern part of the subcontinent too was entirely dominated by tribal people, the Nagas, the Ahoms, and many other. All these tribal people also dominated in the northeastern part of our country. Who were tribals people? We will continue. And these are all some important tribal communities. We will find it here. Gakkars and then Kachiri. Kokars and uh, we have uh, these two we have studied already. Then Bills in the central part of India. Kolis and uh, Bills, Kolis and uh, in the Gons, Bangas and the Cheros and the Khons, Koyas, Badagas. These are all some of the important uh, tribal communities lived in our country. In many areas of present day Bihar and the Jharkhand, Charo chiefdom, this is Charo uh, kingdom was there in this area and by the 12th century they established a very powerful kingdom here. Raja Man Singh, Akbar's famous general attacked and defeated the Charos. Raja Man Singh attacked the Charo kingdom and defeated them in the year 1591. A large amount of booty was taken from them. Large amount of, you can say, wealth was taken from them and entirely it was subdued to the Mughals. Under Aurangzeb, Mughal forces captured many Chero fortresses and subjugated the tribe. And so they compelled the tribe to obey them, uh, to be loyal to the Mughals during the time of Aurangzeb. The Mundas and Santals, the Mundas and the Santals mostly lived here. Among the other important tribes that lived in this region and also in Varissa and Benga. In the Varissa area, Bengal area, they lived. The Maharashtra highlands and Karnataka, we found the Koli tribes and Barats and numerous others. These are Kolis, they are all you can say the doing different kinds of occupations in Maharashtra and this you can say Berard community and in Karnataka and Maharashtra. Further south in Kerala we found a large tribal populations of Koragas in Kerala. These are Koragas and Maravas and many others. Maravas are Tamil Nadu area. These are the tribal people and many other people also we can find. The large tribal of Bhils were spread across western and central part of India. This is the Bhil community. They are uh, spreading in the central and the western part of India. The Gonds were found in great numbers across the present day states of Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. These, in these states we can find the Gond population a good number. We will study about the Gonds in a particular in the coming slides. So these are the Gond tribal people. See their costumes and their and uh, you can say the posture and uh, how they are looking all these things. Gakkars. Gakkars are these people. They lived in Punjab. They are the Gakkar community and uh, they are all living in the northwest part of India and Punjab of India and Punjab of Pakistan. Also, then we have the Kokars tribe again in Punjab and Pakistan and uh, in Indian Pakistan, Punjab they lived. This is you can say the Kokar tribe. This is Gaddis of Himalayas. Gaddis of Himalayas and I told you already they are living in the foothills of the Himalayas and they are doing the and uh, they are uh, doing the practice of transhumans going with their cattle and sheep up to the some extent of the Himalayas for border of the and the sheep. These are the Gaddi women you can find in the foothills of the Himalayas. And we have here the Charos. This is the Charo kingdom, Charo kingdom which ruled uh, in you can say uh, in Bihar and uh, in Jharkhand uh, this is the Charo area and uh, he is one of the important uh, Charo king Charo king, Charos of Bihar and Jharkhand are very very crucial tribal people they also established their kingdom here in this part and then Mundas Mundas uh, who were living in uh, Jharkhand and Orissa and then Chhattisgarh and even you can say the West Bengal, these are the communities, the tribal people of Mundas who lived there. Then we have the Santhals. Santhal tribal people, they lived in, uh, you can say, Orissa and West Bengal and Jharkhand, some parts of, you can say, the 
northern part of west bengal there we can find a good number of santhal communities they have their own custom and uh, they have their own costumes also and we will also study about them in the next higher classes how nomad nomads and mobile people live nomads means those who are not having permanent home they are moving from one place to another place and mobile people live and both both you can say mobile people means nomads how they live we will discuss nomadic pastoralists moved other long distances with their animals as we have seen in case of gaddis gaddis go with their animals into the in, in the himalayas they lived on milk and other pastoral products they also exchanged wool ghee etc with the settled agriculturist for grain cloth utensils and other products because they don't have all these things that's why they are exchanging they practice the barter system of trade because coins were not available at that time in the tribal areas they bought and sold these goods as they moved from one place to another transporting them on their animals so this is one kind of practice they have made because they are transporting the goods from one place to another along with their animals so this is the way how the tribal people or you can say they transporting the goods from one place to another pancharas were the most important trader nomads their caravans was called tanda Tanda is a caravan name of the Banjara community. And the Sultan Alauddin Khalji used the Banjaras to transport grain to the city markets during his uh, time of sultanship in our country. How the nomads and mobile people lived will continue. Emperor Jahangir wrote in his memoirs, Jahangir Nama or Tujiki Jahangiri, that the Banjaras carried grain on their bullocks. from different areas and sold it in towns of mogal period this is you can say the tujiki babri or babar who wrote which was written by the jahangir itself yet the banjara community we can see here and uh, we can see their costume and their culture they transported food grains for the mogal army during military campaign this is you can say they are transporting food grains for the mogal army during a time of military expeditions and uh, of uh, mogal army with a large army there could be 1 lakh bullocks carrying grain so 1 lakh bullock carts were there to carry the grain for mogal army many pastoral tribes reared and sold animals such as cattle and horses to the prosperous people this is also one of the important thing they have done these are all what we can see the pastoral tribal people they are moving along with their animals from one place to another different castes of petty peddlers also traveled from village to village and uh, you can see they selling the product uh, of uh, food grains whatever it may be they made and sold wares such as ropes reeds straw matting and coarse sacks all these things were sold by the peddlers going from home to home village to village entertainers performed in different towns and villages for their livelihood this is entertainers and eunuch all these kind of people they are entertaining and they are dancing and they are doing circus activities and to entertain the people and uh, who are also moving from village to village changing society new castes and hierarchies smaller caste or jatis emerged in the as the economy and the needs of society grew as and when here we have swarnakara he is a jati and uh, belonging to a jati he is not uh, putting in the caste new castes appeared even among the brahmanas also on the other hand many tribes and social groups were taken into caste based society and given the status of jati during this time this is what you can say tribal communities have given the status of jati and uh, during the medieval times specialized artisans smith that is blacksmith the goldsmith or you can say branch smith all carpenters and merchants were also recognized as a separate jatis by the brahmanas so brahmanas only deciding who is belonging to jati who is belonging to the caste all these things they were deciding all such important things This is a weaver community. Here we are having all different kinds of artisans: carpenter, potter, 
and goldsmith blacksmith and a weaver all these people together are called artisans jatis rather than varna became the basis for organizing society among the chatriyas new rajput clans became powerful by the 11th and 12th centuries example punas chandelas chalukyas of northern deccan and others they became very very powerful during the 11th and 12th centuries rajputs were chatriya caste out of the four caste brahmanas chatriyas and vaishyas and shudras they are coming in the second category a closer look the gonds we will discuss about the gond people here the gonds lived in a vast forest region called gondwana or the country inhabited by the gond people so the gondwana region that is mostly covering in jharkhand orissa and then we have parts of west bengal and the chatisgarh this is what we can call gondwana region and this is a carved door gond tribes of bastar area madhya pradesh bastar comes under gondwana region only bastar is one of the largest district in our country they practiced shifting cultivation shifting cultivation means they often move from one place to another because in order to regain the fertility of the land the large gond tribe was further divided into many smaller clans each clan had its own raja or rai every gond tribal community have been divided into so many clans each clan has a raja or what we can called rai about <coughs> about the time that the power of the delhi sultans was declining a few large gond kingdoms were beginning to dominate the smaller gond chiefs also the akbar nama which was written by abul fazal a history of akbar's reign mentions the gond kingdom of garha katanga that had 70000 villages in the gond kingdom this is what you can see the entire gondwana region where the gonds established their kingdom important features of garha katanga of gond kingdom centralized administration because there is no decentralization almost all powers are held by the king only and king is executive and legislative and judicial head of the country this is what you can say the gond kingdom garha katanga kingdom was divided into garhas the garhas means gods what you can call ghad or garhas now based upon that only chatisgarh is the name given for chatisgarh state and each ghar was controlled by a particular gond clan only no other people was given the leadership of this ghar each ghar again divided into chaurasis each chaurasi has 84 villages and each chaurasi was divided into barhots which is a group of unit of 12 villages brahmanas received land grants from the gond rajas and were influential people during the garha katanga ruling in the country brahmana people and they are enjoyed a very good status there the gond chiefs were now wished to be recognized as rajputs so amandas the gond raja of garha katanga assumed the title of sangram shah Sangram Shah is the title mostly given to the Rajput, and though they are tribal kings, but they wanted to assume the titles of Rajputs. This is uh, Aman Das who uh, entitled himself as Sangram Shah. His son Dalpat married Princess Durga Vati, the daughter of Salbahan, the Chandela Rajput Raja of Mahoba. He is a Rajput Raja. His daughter is Durga Vati. whom dalpat is married is dalpat and due to the death of sudden death of her husband dalpat that is dalpat rani durgavati ruled the kingdom on behalf of her five year old son called veer narayan though the dalpat immature death has uh, kept the kingdom uh, in the hands of uh, rani durgavati who is a very very powerful lady and a very bold woman and very warrior woman who controlled the empire on behalf of her five year old son Bir Narayan she is Rani Durgavati in 1565 Mughals under Asaf Khan defeated Rani Durgavati Rani Durgavati was defeated by Asaf Khan in the year 1565 and uh, that is the end of this 
Garha Katanga kingdom. Despite all the fall of Garha Katanga, the Gond kingdom survived for some time. Sometime it was survived in spite of the defeat in the hands of Sasapan. However, they became much weaker and later struggled unsuccessfully against though they as I can say they had made several attempts against Bundelas or Bundelkhand and Marathas of Maharashtra but they did not get the previous glory or you can see the Bundela chiefs and these Marathas and they now we shall study about the Ahoms. Ahoms another tribal group and at this time we can study the northeastern part of India. Now we have studied central part of India. Now we will see in the northeastern part of India. The homes migrated to the Brahmaputra Valley from present day Myanmar, that is Burma in the 13th century. They came from Myanmar to uh, from Myanmar to in say this area. This is the Brahmaputra River coming from Tibet and taking U shape here and going down to the uh, you can say Bangladesh. So they came from Myanmar, settled down here in this Ahom area. And after coming over here, they created a new state by defeating the local uh, landlord community that is called Buhians. Buhians are local landlord community. They defeated them and they established their own uh, kingdom here that is the Ahom kingdom. During the 16th century, they annexed the kingdoms of the Chautias in 1523 and the Koch Hajau in 1581 and subjugated many other tribal people also. This is you can see the Chautia kingdom in the upper part of the Assam and then this is what you can say the we have the Koch Ajao kingdom that is in the eastern in the western side and uh, these uh, Chautias are in the eastern side in the middle we have Ahoms and these two were uh, subjugated and annexed to the Ahom kingdom by the Ahoms king. The Ahoms built a large state and for this they used firearms as early as 1530s. They know that they used firearms to attack on other kingdoms and uh, uh, by the year 1660s they could even make high quality gunpowder and cannons. This is you can see the firearms they used against the enemy kingdoms and this is you can say the fire gunpowder they have created, they have invented and this is cannon. Cannon is these are the three important uh, weapons used by them uh, to annex the neighboring uh, kingdoms. Invasion of Mughals. Ahoms faced many invasions from the southwest. Among those invasions in 1662, the Mughals invaded this area. That was one of the powerful invasions which was led by Mir Jumla and who attacked the Ahom kingdom. And these are the Ahom and uh, soldiers and the, here we have the Mir Jumla and then he is the military commander despite their brave defense the homes were defeated but the direct Mughal control over the region could not last long and so once again they were able to recoup pikes. Pikes are the a home state depended upon forced labor. Pikes are nothing but forced labor. A system where forced labor is used for doing the work. Those forced to work for the state were called pikes. Those who forced to work for the state government, that some days you have to work, they are called pikes. A census of the population was taken in order to take them into work. Each village had to send a number of pikes by rotation basis to work for the a home state. This is one of the feature contributions of a home state. Almost all adult males served in the army during the war uh, in the home state. Ad adults means those who are about 18 years or 16 years also they have taken. And at other times they were engaged in building dams, irrigation system and other public works. They are not only do working, doing, uh, waging war in the army but also they are used, these uh, young people are used for making building dams, irrigation system and other public works also. The homes also introduced new methods of rice cultivation during that time and that is a peculiar system they have introduced. A home society was divided into clans or kales. Clans or kales what we can call. There were very few castes of artisans during the time of a home state. Artisans in the home areas came from adjoining kingdoms because uh, 
uh, we found no artisans from the uh, home state. Originally, the homes worshipped their own tribal gods because they are their own tribal gods. They don't worship the Vedic gods and they have their own gods. To worship poets and scholars were given land grants by the home kings. Theatre was encouraged. Theatre art, that is uh, skits and then natakas, were all introduced by them. Important works of Sanskrit were translated into the local language. Historical works known as Buranjis were also written first in the Ashom lang home language and then in the Assamese language. Thank you.